Yes, yeah, welcome back. Um, it's been an interesting moment on the show. And um, this is a segment a lot of our viewers across have been waiting for. We have a special guest in the house. Um, a man that has done so well for, in a short time, but has done so well for sport development um, in the country. Um, it's good to have you on the show, Yemi Edu. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Um, Yemi Edu has been doing so well for sports in the country. And um, in a long while, I, I want to ask, we have not seen someone um, in the light of um, MK Abiola, um, who has developed, have done so much for sport in the country. Um, with your profile, it just uh, not all the profile, but one or two things you've done so far this year, the, and um, last year about um, development of table tennis, and many other sports you've engaged yourself in. Um, talking from the one that is visible to, to the media right now, uh, most recently is um, bringing together two great minds about um, the Deborah Quick Pain and um, Tunde Onokoya just some few um, days ago. And that's just to show that um, you are here to stay um, in developing sport in the country. Is that your plan to make sure that we are next sport talent for the nation's development? <clears throat> uh, thank you, Mudashir. Well, you know, I grew up in Sule. Okay. And you agree with me, that's the sports city, sports center, that's the hub. So I was really influenced by the like the great um, MKO Abiola, okay. um, Chief Molade, Okoya. Okoya Thomas. And I'm first and foremost a football person. Okay. Um, I, I commit so much to football. Okay. But uh, I believe that the disadvantaged sports have a lot to offer and they are low hanging fruits. Hmm. Uh, when we started the table tennis uh, last year, the first Daniel Ford Youth Elite um, Table Tennis Championship, our plan was a five year plan, okay. hoping that our alumni would go on to take over from people like uh, Aruna Quadri. Okay. Exactly. However, in six months, hmm. um, Matthew Kuti is already the national champion okay. and the West African champion. Mm. So there are talents are bound in Nigeria and uh, we're just doing our own little bit. Okay. Yeah, uh, and, and the little bit and the focus you've done is so big because now we've been looking for who is going to be the next Arnold Kodri. In the next three or four years, per venture, Arnold Kodri, the biggest table tennis name in Africa, might no longer be participating. And, um, We've all been talking about how do you get the next Agumon Kodri. There's an Omotai Olat GD. There's a Mati, uh, Mati Taiwo in um, Portugal. We also know there's an Aziz Solanke also out of the country. And um, in the next few days, those names will be coming together for the WTT contender that's taking place. Um, what else is your plan, apart from that major plan of ensuring that um, the next um, Agumon Kodri comes true your project or your focus? What plan also do you have for um, table tennis? We, we are going to have the second edition this year. Okay. And we, it's a long-term project. Okay. And it's not just for the mail. We're looking at the next Bosse Cafu as oh. well. Um, okay. In my office in London, okay. it's, uh, the doors are always open to ex uh, oh, okay. sports people okay. and talent. Okay. And when they come in, we, had, we have major discussions on how to develop the, the sport. Okay. Um, and we've reached out to some of them to encourage the new and upcoming ones, you know, learn from their mistake and um, also um, get encouragement from where they got it right, okay. you know. So uh, that is table tennis. Okay. And in the last couple of days, as you well know, it is chess. And you know with these things, it takes a while to, to put them together. And when you, when you put them together and you showcase them, people think they are noble. Okay. But a lot goes behind the... Uh, and there are other things we are working on. Okay. And um, they will play out as the, as the months play by. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of, uh, I guess, will be seen at um, the, the video of um, just recent um, Tunde Onokoya Deboa Quick Pain. And I'm sure we'll bring that to your view soon. Uh, what propelled that... that um, plan. I mean, just a few weeks ago, we had Tunde Nokaya in the World Guinness Book Record at, um, in New York, bringing together everybody. And um, you also brought about the very fact that um, 
we saw you as the initiator, the main initiator of that with um, Prince, who is um, the president of Nigerian Chess Federation. Um, how did you collaborate that? Because that's, the next, that's probably going to be the biggest event in Nigeria this year in terms of talent and in terms of collaboration. And it's chess. Chess is not on the top list. You've got down to bring it to that level where everybody will be talking about chess. Tell us um, behind the scene of, of that. Thank you. Tule has done a, a great job for, to get chess in the forefront as a topical um, um, issue or uh, uh, topic in Nigerian sporting arena. And I was watching from a distance. Mm. Then um, Kuro Kasumu, okay. who I didn't know had a passion for chess. Yes, okay. You know, he's the president of the Orchid um, Chess Club. Yeah. Approached me about Deborah. That Deborah is, um, is tipped to be the first grandmaster mm. uh, from Nigeria. Okay. She had some issues getting across to Ghana to play the African Championship. Sure, 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 yeah. And we were able to wait in um, early enough for her to attend that tournament. And the good thing is that she came forth. Mm. You know, this, this was an 11-year-old girl at that point in March. Okay. You know, she came forth and she was the only one that beat the eventual winner mm. because it was a round robin um, championship. So I just thought that, look, uh, chess has probably gotten the best uh, optics mm. in my lifetime in Nigeria okay. with what Tunde had done. Okay. And I felt what will keep it going is because we had already adopted the boy at that point, mm. and we felt that look, what we would get, uh, will keep chess in the front burner is something exciting, and what could be exciting to have a youngster, you know, who was just finishing her exam okay. some days ago, yeah. to bring that from Bielsa. She has a compelling story. She doesn't live in Lagos or Abuja. She lives in Bielsa. Yes, she was, she's 11 years old. She only turned 12 last Friday, yeah. you know. So for us, everything would fall in place. So mm. I got Kule to speak to Tule, mm. who yeah. immediately Accepted. accepted the invitation. We had a meeting, and we had to really, it was a tight uh, schedule, schedule for everyone. Okay. So we tried to match it with Deborah as well as school, and she would be representing Nigeria in Georgia. Oh, okay, interesting. In Georgia from the 21st of June. Oh, okay. So there was so much, there were so many moving uh, targets, targets that we yeah. had to, um, you know, you know, move round and and eat that spot. The date, you know, I spoke to the chairperson of the uh, NITCOM Nigerian in uh, diaspora, yeah, okay. uh, Mrs. Abike Dabi, yeah. and she was excited about it. So everything just uh, keyed in, but they were not expecting the level of presentation, you know, we we put in because if you are going to attract corporates. You know, there's a standard. There's mm. a there's a minimum standard. So, no. And coming from the UK, we can't come here and now do something less what we are used to. So the optics has been good. The the game itself was brilliant. And the beauty of it is that we are considering a trilogy. Maybe bring them okay. to London okay. and final and a final game in uh, Lagos in December when everybody will be around, you know, a so, lot of diasporans and all that. So it's not the end of that story. Okay. We're still looking at... Um, a trilogy. Uh, yeah. Oh, interesting. And, and, and for, for someone that have covered so much sports, uh, are we going to extend this goodwill of yours to other sports? I mean, I'm sure the president of a particular sport is sitting down, hearing and listening to all this. It's, it's, is it your plan to extend all this to the next spot? What, or you can just give us what the future looks like with Daniel Ford Foundation after table tennis, chess. I'm sure you've done so much of football and um, I'm sure a lot of people will be saying, oh, the football have been given so, so much and so much all over again. Where's our next stop or what's the next plan? 
I think the focus should not be on Daniel Ford okay. International or Daniel Ford Foundation or Yemiedo. Okay. What we've been able to do here is to show to our friends in the diaspora okay. all over the world that you can come into Nigeria and add some positive, mm. some, some positive to um, uh, a disadvantage okay. um, uh, program. Mm, okay. It could be anything. We do other things. We do uh, action for change and empowerment. Okay. We've done over 3,000 wheelchairs. Okay. So uh, this is, I feel, uh, my friends in the diaspora can do a lot more. To come back home. So it, it shouldn't be about, there are many Yemi yeah, does there. Okay. There are so many people doing things quietly, okay. but we need to do it properly okay. so that it can get the traction it require, it, it deserves. Mm. We we had about twenty youngsters there, you know, school kids okay. in the room on the day. Okay. You know, I I got a call, I got calls from grown ups okay. that now want to learn how to play chess. Mm. You know, it's a competitive game. It's uh, a game that, unlike football, that you need. Even if it's a set, you need five or six people to play. Mm -hmm. So, chess, you and your wife, you and your child, mm -hmm. you and your friend, you know, you can immerse yourself in it for the next three to four mm -hmm. hours. And we'll mm -hmm. look at, we'll, we've, learned, we'll, we've learned one or two things from the last uh, event, which would improve on. I like the blitz or the bullets. Yeah, yeah, the bullet, so, yeah. so, for passive chess followers, that is more adrenaline pumping, okay. more exciting. Yeah, exciting. And we we'd, we'd have to tailor it to what would be good for TV, mm. what would make 500, 1,000 people, mm. maybe have an Onikon Stadium or sure. Teslim Balogo or, 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 with people mm. coming to watch chess. We've achieved that with table tennis, okay. and I don't see why we can't do that with chess. Interesting. And I'm sure... Um, Having in the soon, soonest future, we'll probably be having something like the biggest chess um, gathering in Nigeria using the main bowl of the national stadium, and that is just to show that um, you are your plans is also in alignment with the plan of Prince Adewale, who is the president of um, Nigerian Chess um, Federation. So now, before before I come back to you, I um, I'm, I'm sure a lot of our viewers out there will be wondering what. Um, the, the event is all about and I'm sure we'll not take you to that um, particular moment where we have um, the chess event that featured Tunde Onokoya and um, Deborah Quickpen where the love dignitaries um, across the globe um, came in to watch um, that particular moment. I'm sure we have the video ready now. In yeah, the women's the category in Africa, she's currently ranked number four. In the under 12 category in the world, she's currently ranked number three. In the under 12 category in Nigeria, male and female, she's currently ranked number one. Okay, so, so without a doubt, um, Deborah is a chess prodigy and it's a pleasure to have, a, have her here. And with her, all the way from Yenagua, is Deborah's mom, Vera Quickpen. <laughs> and um, later on, but right now, let me quickly invite to speak very briefly just to address us, the Vice President of Nigeria Chess Federation, um, Prince Adeyinka Adewale. The Nigeria Chess Federation has been working tirelessly to promote chess development in Nigeria, and I'm proud to say that our efforts are yielding fruits. We've been actively engaged in various initiatives, including training programs for coaches, tournaments and outreach programs to introduce chess to new audiences. Our goal is to make chess a household name in Nigeria and we are committed to achieving this. My first bragging right is from my constituency. <laughs> 
and I've been looking for him. In fact, there was a time last year I called Mr. Onokoya, the only Onokoya I know, and he said, no, you're not related. I've been looking for you, so nice to see you here today. Congratulations, we're proud of you, what you're doing in the slums, the Guinness World Record, and honestly speaking, we're very proud of you. Thank you so much for your humility and all you're doing, changing lives. Deborah, you're a gifted special child. Can't we just see that in you? Very special child. You know, when I heard the name Quick Pen, I thought that was your pen name, your pet name or something. Because I told you your hands are very quick. And you're very... So, mommy, well done. You have a genius as a daughter. We're proud of you, Deborah, and I wish you all the very best. Let the games begin, as it is my pleasure and privilege to flag off this historic chess tournament taking place today in Lagos, Nigeria. All the best to both of you. You are a worthy opponent. You know, like I said, I mean, I'm just an old man. I have a few tricks, but she was clearly the better player today. Uh, you know, maybe I could have gotten a draw, and, but she was, she was, it was a very hard game, right? And uh, as she's going to Georgia now, she's going to need a lot more support. Imagine if she just goes and she wins. That will be the pride of all of us as Nigerians. So whatever we can do in any capacity, please and please support. I wish you all the best on your journey, Deborah, and I hope you're going to do even greater things. Thank you very much. It's written, Tunde's name is written um, in gold because look at all the media, you know, um, CNBC, CNN, we are all following you, and this is what we expect Deborah to do as the years go by. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for coming for this event. Um, thank you all for supporting me in the way you can. Champion, the youngest in the history of Nigeria at the age of 12. In the women's category. Interesting, the biggest chess event in, in, in Nigeria for a long time. The chess has not done this for a very long time. Though they've been doing so much, I mean, kudos to the vice president. But tell us, um, how much viewers we were able to get from this? Just like the same way the old world was um, concentrated in New York, looking the outcome of um, the marathon record of Tunde Onokoya. Can, can you give us some stats behind this? On the YouTube portal live, we had about 2,000 people glued, and the commentary from the feedback was very engaging as well. Okay. Then the, the chess portal, because the, the chess uh, community have their own portal, people logged in from across the world. Oh, okay. And um, in the days after the match, okay. you know, in conversations, I had people talking about the match, oblivious that it actually took place in Lagos. Hmm. They thought it was somewhere yeah. else, you know. So I think uh, that is a testament to what the team were able to put together. Okay. That it, it was of um, a world class, um, a world standard, you know. And uh, there was commentary as okay. well in the uh, on the chess uh, co in the chess community uh, portal. I think it's a it's a game uh, match that will be talked about for many years and I think we got the best results we could have wished for on the day. Yeah, you mentioned a trilogy of this happening. Are we seeing that this year or is something still in the in the blueprints yet to come out or is something that we will be expressing expecting soon? Well, if um, wishes were horses, we mm. would love to have it this year, uh, before September in London and definitely December in Lagos. But, you know, these guys are very busy as well. You know, she has to keep playing to Ghana points, mm, okay. you know, and Tunde is now sought after across the world. So we have to be able to um, get, but they have the audience. Oh, okay. they, they have the audience in London waiting, you know, and they would have the audience, a bigger audience in Lagos in December. Oh, okay. Uh, you also mentioned um, about you reaching out to your, fellow um, Nigerians over there. There are many Deborah Quick Pain around and um, what effort those that sort that what effort did they make to at least to be part of it if there's any um, remarks from it? 
Well, it's not just the it's not just my colleagues and friends in the diaspora. Uh, what we were able to achieve on Tuesday was to get uh, corporate leaders oh, okay. in Nigeria to come in, because a lot of people see chairs as your your it's living cool. room, just like a pastime, not a serious game. And I'm happy that the the ones that came in and gl stayed glued online. Are that they are left with a different perspective. Okay. Now, um, very importantly, is that a lot of people are looking at ways mm. are replicating this across mm. different spots. It could be badminton, it could be Scrabble, you know. There is something I believe that might be a genetic function here. Okay. Because if you remember Tanimola. Tanimola. Uh, oh. an, an ATM Nigerian yeah. that Ruchi. never played yeah. uh, chess yeah. prior to living in Nigeria. He was homeless in, in the U.S. And I think he became a national champion. Yeah. So these things are no fluke, mm. you know. But if we don't encourage Tunde with his chess for slum, those kids will end up hacking your phones, mm. you know. So let's direct them and tailor them to something that will be uplifting and, and positive, like what Deborah is doing. Uh, at a level, is, you know, just imagine. I, 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 I'm, I'm glad about your mention of Tanimola. It's, it's the old global st um, world at that moment. And um, your mention of Tanimola has just given me the very fact that um, you are where you're supposed to do, you know what you're doing, because um, not everybody will mention Tanimola. Tanimola in Nigerian over there, seeking Aslam and um, she, he became a national champion and since then that brought so much just like the way you are doing to Deborah or the way the whole community is supporting Deborah is the same way the community then in New York in America was giving so much energy to Tani Mola and that's why we could talk about um, Tani Mola even in our bedrooms and I'm sure that there are many Tani Mola though Deborah Cookpen, she's with her mother, but the Tani Mola story is just a replica of what we are doing, what you did with Deborah, that you can also f put her in the limelight and, you know, going to Georgia and doing many other things. Now, how much do you think we could achieve, even with this development of Deborah and many others? How much, I'm looking at us having the many Deborahs in several spots. For Deborah to attain the heights mm. she's set and we've set for her, mm. she needs competition. Okay. So we believe this event would engender that competitiveness. Mm. Okay. More people, I saw a lot of parents that came with their kids and like, look, my kid is good, you know. So let them keep playing okay. and know that, you know, it's not a case that chess is a dead game mm. that has no future. Mm. You know, you can actually um, take it as a career. You can, it can be a springboard to okay. some other great things. Okay. But what people don't understand, you know, coming close to Deborah has exposed me mm. to what you need to put in to reach the heights she has attained. She practices for seven hours a day. Mm. And we were going somewhere, I think, on Monday, and she brought out her laptop. And I said, what are you doing? She was coding. Hmm. You know, she has the board in her head. So our practice is not just on the board, hmm. you know. But if we don't share this, okay. you know, how would the upcoming uh, talent, talent understand what needs... She's now a benchmark. Yeah, she's uh, a benchmark. You know, so we need to showcase what you know it's not about the glamour the glamour is two minutes mm. but for that two minutes right she was actually very disappointed because okay. she had the games in her hands okay. you know she said look i didn't perform to my expectation she you know and this i believe would help her in georgia mm. because that was why we had the lights we had the crowd we had the commentary we had the mm. personality because if you want to do this you have to do it on the big stages okay definitely. you know so this is the preparation i think it was a good preparation for her and we are looking forward to a very very successful uh competition so, uh, so, so in georgia yeah so we you you we are all in the process of making enjoy festival grandmaster 
women grandmaster with what is going on with the we we'll probably see someone the first female or the first Nigerian because it's been all we've done in West chess. Africa, West actually. Africa, yeah. yes, West Africa. Thank you very much because with all we've done with chess and developing chess with schools and all that, we've not attained that grandmaster um, level. And I'm sure Deborah is on that part. Can you say anything about that? No, absolutely. And um, I believe one of the reasons we've not attained that height is we never had it in our sight. Mm. Now we are claiming it. We are saying it. She's saying it. And she's walking towards it. You know, there's still a lot of work to yeah, be done. Our coaches have done great. Mm. But we're already looking out there for a grandmaster coach that would have uh, the, the bear under their wings mm. when she goes for tournaments okay. you know they'll prepare her and you know um if we get one grandmaster like most things like like waiting for a boss yeah. for hours then they you know you got get five six coming along the line and i agree with you there are many talents uh like her you know daniel ford has placed a bet on deborah okay. i would like to encourage other corporates okay. you know pick one and let's meet Okay. Get your own Deborah. Okay, get and, and uh, Deborah. Deborah. Uh, yes. Of course, of course. Yeah. And I think you know, you know, and, and that's why um, we when we talk about private um, sectors involvement in sport development, you from the private sector, you with a mind like this. In as much as you are saying that we should get as many Deborahs, I'm also sitting down here thinking we should get as many Daniel Ford. Absolutely. Yeah. As well, my encouragement is. Other corporates mm. should bring, you know, the, you know, you guys can help to source the talent, and we we make them compete, mm. you know, and we can have rather than having this uh, event once in a decade, okay. we can have it every quarter, okay. you know. Football matches are played twice a week. Mm. Why should we wait to have golf competitions uh, once? Every other season. Okay. I, I was um, passing, the time is no longer by our side now. I was passing through um, the National Stadium yesterday, and I think um, Lagos State Government has tried so much to make sure under the stadium, under the bridge in National Stadium, is a very pleasant sight. There's light there on the night, and a lot of torture going on by my. Why not? The chess community owning, I'm just saying this, why not the chess community owning that under the bridge of the national stadium where anybody can just play chess at, and it to be granted? I'm just thinking because um, a lot of things goes on, um, chess and all that. But before we round up, uh, tell our viewers there that they can get themselves involved in sports. And I'm sure sport is no longer, is not equal to education. It's not equal to academics because yesterday I spoke on my show about combining sports with education and um, people want someone like you to tell them, yes, if your child is a scrabble player, let him continue. If your child is a chess player, let him or her continue. If your child plays taekwondo, let them come continue. Uh, sports itself is a form of education. Mm. And in the UK, your, your strength in a sports would even, um, would even allow you um, scholarship, scholarship yeah. you know, you might end up paying little or nothing in fees in, in independent schools. And back to your observation about the, the under, the, uh, under the bridge, it, it's not just about sports. You have yeah. to remember that the girl was taken to community centers when she was one and two, well, between the ages of one to three. Okay. And there were many board games, Scrabble and mm. chess. She gravitated to chess. Oh, okay. But it was because she was exposed to something, okay. you know. So it's a brilliant idea if the place can be lit, okay. safe, safe, and there are different board games. Mm. Why not? Mm. Mm. Um, I, I, yeah, lastly, I, I have learned to appreciate your vast knowledge. You know, most of my questions, I come down, you open it up. And I appreciate your coming. Thank you very much for, for being part of this. I, it's, not, it's not most times you have a guest and you're learning from the guest, you know. But you just joined the list of guests that I bring down here and um, I'm able to take one of things from. Thank you very much, I'm Yemi Edu. It's, um, it's been a wonderful moment on the show today. And if you look at your time, it's some few minutes to 10. And that, um, to 12, and um, that's where we're going to draw on today's cutting on this program. If it's just joined over, we're speaking to Yemi Edu, just Google Yemi Edu, Google Sports. It comes in Andy, and he's the CEO of um, 
stand and fall and foundation. So this is how I'm going to draw the cutting for today's program. Thank you for watching. Same time next week, we'll be giving you all what you need to know in the world of sport. And I promise those that want to see the highlight of jamming defeating Scotland um, as we are up today, there's a very moment to also revive your memory of yesterday's match. Thank you and keep watching Plus Sports. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's a pleasure. It's no justice.